artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, AI image generators. Even the least talented of us can create artwork with just a few clicks. Over the last few months, we've seen an incredible surge in AI content generated using AI programs as tools like Dolly, Stable Diffusion, and Midjourney have become accessible to the general public. And as a result, legitimate concerns have been raised about whether or not these programs are, by their very nature, committing copyright infringement. In these datasets, there exists billions of copyrighted images. It's just like dumping all of recorded human history into a black box. And now, there's finally been a lawsuit filed in the Federal District Court of Northern California. It attaches a few defendants, but most notably Stability AI, the creator of Stable Diffusion, and Midjourney, which also uses Stable Diffusion. The suit claims that Stable Diffusion is committing copyright infringement on a mind-bogglingly massive scale. I'm Jake Watson, a licensed and barred attorney in the state of California who spent the last 12 years making cutting edge digital art with Corridor. In this video, I'll explain to you what this case is all about and why that's not even the real issue, divulging instead the legal secrets of what's truly at stake. Now the suit claims that the nearly 6 billion training images which have been scraped from web pages and other sources across the internet were obtained without the consent of the image owners or the website operators. The data set is so large that to download it takes almost 240 terabytes of open disk space on a computer. That's a huge data set. It is, in large part, the Lion 5B dataset that makes Stable Diffusion renowned for how good it is at generating AI images. The class action lawsuit asserts that this is a violation of the exclusive rights of the copyright holders in those images. And they're right. Stability doesn't deny that huge swaths of the training images are copyrighted, which in the most basic terms is copyright infringement on a mind-bogglingly massive scale. If you're one of those people that argue it's okay because stability is open source and it's not really making that much money because it's free to download, well, I've got news for you. Uh, whether or not something is committing copyright infringement has absolutely no bearing on whether it is free and open source. So just take that argument and drop it in the toilet because it doesn't matter. Okay, fine. But how is it that the class action lawsuit that was just filed isn't really about this? Well, it's not really about whether they committed copyright infringement because they did. But copies of the training images aren't actually in the distributed model. Say what? The real trick of Stable Diffusion and what the plaintiffs more wisely argue is that it created latent images of all the 5.85 billion images the model was trained on. These latent images are developed through a process of machine learning, where a training image is associated with a specific word, and then gradually more and more noise is introduced over the training image, until eventually the entire original training image is completely obscured by the noise. A second process of machine learning then occurs, reversing this process. Only this time, the noise is gradually reduced and the program attempts to construct its own image that is visually a reconstruction of the original image it was just trained on. But it never quite nails this to an exact copy. The plaintiffs suggest, however, that the latent images are copies of the training images all the same. While they stop short of actually calling them exact copies or reproductions, they do refer to them as reconstructed copies and infer the argument that they are, for all intents and purposes, copies. Their strongest argument, however, and the thing that leads to the core issue that this case is all about, which we still haven't gotten to, is that any image generated from Stable Diffusion is a derivative work of the training image the model was built on. A derivative work is a work based on or derived from one or more already existing works. Translations, movie adaptations, art reproductions, and new editions of books now the suit claims that once the program is trained, its data mesh, the statistical mesh of data that contains all of its billions of latent images, can be manipulated through conditioning and interpolation. To describe this, the complaint uses the example of a dog wearing a hat eating an ice cream cone. 
In this example, the text prompts of a dog wearing a hat eating an ice cream cone are conditioning data that inform the model what latent images to call upon. Then, through a process of interpolation, the program will combine the latent images together into something that's legible to the human eye. The argument is that this interpolation is still entirely and completely reliant upon the latent images, which are solely and exclusively derived from the training images, which are copyrighted. So regardless of the fact that the resulting image of a dog wearing a hat eating an ice cream cone looks nothing like any of the original training images, there's a very good argument that the plaintiffs make that every image the model generates is a derivative work. And this matters because the right to produce and distribute derivative works is known as the adaptation right, and it is one of the exclusive rights of copyright, meaning that a derivative work cannot be created without the authorization from the copyright owner. However, a work is found to be transformative rather than derivative if it alters an original work with new expression, meaning, or message, or when it adds value to the original work by creating new information, new aesthetics, new insights, or new understandings. A transformative work takes the original copyrighted work and changes its very nature to such a degree that the use no longer qualifies as infringing because it serves an entirely new purpose. It is not merely derivative. The significance of this nuanced difference between derivative and transformative cannot be overstated. Works that are derivative require permission from the copyright owner, but works that are transformative do not. From this perspective, we can view the real issue of the case with precision. The real issue is whether Stability's use of the 5.85 billion training images that make up the Lion 5B dataset constitutes fair use. Now, before we dig into this any further, there's something that I have to admit. 2023 is a brand new year, and courtesy of today's sponsor, Squarespace, you now have the tools to make it better than ever. That's right, I'm doing an integration right in the middle of this. <gasps> Squarespace has beautiful award-winning templates and 24-7 customer service. Now, what else do you need to know? Well, a couple things, in fact. Look, over the last few years, the hot trend has been doing subscription services for everything under the sun. Well, with Squarespace, they've integrated that membership ability into your website. That means that you can create a members only area on your website, which allows you to put things behind paywalls, offer exclusive services, things like that, all with the click and the breeze of a few easy buttons. They also allow you social media formatting, which allows you to make one post from your Squarespace website and have that automatically go out and be formatted to a multitude of different social media platforms. Save yourself a lot of time, and that's a great thing. Squarespace also has some of the best in-game analytics out of any other website builder out there. This allows you to better understand what people are doing when they come to your website and how to better improve your website over time to give people an even better experience. I mean, that sounds like an A plus in law school to me. So if you're interested in getting started building your own website today, head on over to squarespace.com slash corridor crew to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash corridor crew for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Or just click the link in the description. Anyways, let's get back to this class action lawsuit. The results of a decision in favor of fair use would have far-reaching consequences, effectively allowing AI image generators carte blanche to create models trained on works of any kind, no matter how large and without the permission, consent, or authorization of any of the copyright owners, all of whom have contributed valuable works of originality to image generator models, which owe their principal value in how good they work to those underlying images. Now you might think, hey, Jake, this isn't that big of a deal, okay? All they did was take some images and allow more images to be generated from this. Well, I don't see what the big issue is. Well, look, if you don't think that this technology is going to continue to improve and improve, think again. This technology is going to affect all audiovisual entertainment as we know it forever into our future. That's where we're at right now. So we need to figure this out. We cannot understate that. 
Now back to fair use, okay? Fair use is an affirmative defense, meaning that it can't be brought by a plaintiff to initiate a lawsuit. It can only be argued by a defendant once a plaintiff asserts a copyright violation. And at the moment, we're still waiting on Stability's answer to the initial complaint. That said, it's hard to conceive how they wouldn't make a fair use argument here, so here's how that analysis might go by a court to determine whether or not their use of the Lion 5B dataset constitutes a transformative fair use. At its core, fair use is intended to prevent a rigid application of copyright law that would otherwise stifle the very creativity copyright law is designed to foster. To make a finding of fair use, courts consider four factors. Now this is the most critical part of how this whole thing will shake out, so don't fall asleep here. A failure to understand the nuance will ultimately lead to a failure to understand the conclusion itself. First, the courts consider whether the purpose and character of the new use is transformative of the original. Remember, a transformative use must take the original copyrighted work and transform its very nature to such a significant degree that the use no longer qualifies as infringing because it serves a new purpose. That said, just because a new use is found to be transformative does not guarantee that the new use is fair. That's because the courts will also consider the nature of the original work, the amount and substantiality of the original work used in the new work, and finally, whether or not the new use undermines the value of and market for the original. The commercial value of the new use can't be one that undermines or replaces the value of the original work. Instead, fair use requires something highly new, something original, a new purpose at which the new use is being directed. And lastly, courts always consider the prior precedent in making a determination of fair use. Well, nothing quite like AI image generators has existed before, and there are a multitude of cases worth considering, I find two in particular that stand out. First, Perfect 10 versus Google. This case was brought against Google by adult magazine publisher Perfect 10, where Google provided thumbnail copies of Perfect 10 images through its search function. Perfect 10 then sued Google for copyright infringement, but the court found that Google's use of the thumbnails was fair use, primarily due to the highly transformative nature of the use, ruling that Google transformed the images from one of entertainment to one of retrieving information, and noting that search engine technology provides an astoundingly valuable public benefit, which should not be jeopardized just because it might affect someone's sales. That's pretty strong precedent. The second case is Authors Guild versus Google, which was brought by different groups of publishers against Google over whether Google had committed copyright infringement when it scanned and digitized copies of printed books into an online searchable database. The court affirmed a finding of fair use, stating that digitizing the books, creating a search functionality for them, and displaying only snippets of them in the search results was fair use. It also found the purpose of the copywriting was highly transformative and did not undermine the market for the originals, despite the fact that Google had a commercial nature and a profit motivation in the new use. Think about that. Didn't matter the fact that Google had a commercial nature and a profit motivation in the new use. Didn't matter that Google was using thumbnails and that those thumbnails had an astoundingly valuable public benefit. So what does this mean for AI art? Well, as you can see, courts rely heavily upon the transformative nature of a new use, and I think the case against stability, if it doesn't settle first, will be no different here. I think overall, stability does have a very good argument for fair use because it appears that their use of the training images in the Lion 5B dataset is highly transformative, such that it creates a new purpose for the original images. I don't think there's much denying that. In addition, it doesn't appear that this new use by stability deprives the copyright owners of their right to control and benefit from their original work. However, given that this type of technology has never existed before, especially given how quickly it's developed, I think that, as with the dawn of the internet, we need to be very careful in considering the far-reaching implications that a finding of fair use might have. Now, I do think there is a world where people are less inclined to desire the art of the artists who have work 
in AI image generating data sets. I think that that is a possibility that can exist. I don't think we're in that space right now, but I do think that is a reality. And there needs to be an absolute recognition of value that but for the sheer mass of data and the quality of images included in that data, stable diffusion would not be nearly as good as it is. The old saying in data science that crap in equals crap out is 100% true here. Now, whether or not that unfairly deprives the copyright owner of their right to control and benefit from their work, I do think remains to be seen. Right now, it doesn't appear to be going in that direction, but we're very early in all of this. I mean, Stable Diffusion wasn't even released publicly until August of 2022. And this nascent stage of development may have an effect on a court's finding of fair use. Because once it's given, it's hard to take back. In addition, I pray that the lawyers on both sides of this are good enough to explain to the courts exactly how this technology works and we're not dealing with another senate type inquiry of mark zuckerberg well if so how do you sustain a business model in which users don't pay for your service senator we run ads oh my god at the end of the day i am thankful that this lawsuit is being brought I know it sounds weird, but I'm also thankful that companies like Stability are pushing the boundaries of what you can do with artistic tools. And I think that this fight will ultimately lead to a better coexistence of both arts and entertainment and computer science well into the future. And that's good for everybody. But my friends, this is just the beginning. Literally, as I was writing this video, news broke that Getty Images is suing Stability in the United Kingdom for also alleged copyright violations. There doesn't appear to be any shortage of litigation coming, but perhaps, just maybe, if we can separate our emotions from it, we might be able to see that this legal fight is exactly what needs to be happening right now. What a wild time to be alive. If you liked this video, let us know in the comments because I would love to do more. It was a ton of fun to write and to research and to create. And as always, thanks for watching.